Hello folks, long time no see. I'm still a little bit busy with ITT. But of course I don't probably graduate from there until maybe sometime in September, which is about five months from today. Only I don't know when that'll be. But first I gotta finish. Now some of the racing you may have seen already well, probably wasn't the best racing you've ever seen in your life. Or probably wasn't the best racing period. Well, you know, bright red car with O'Reilly Auto Parts all over it and then a large 25 on the roof and the doors. Well, you got to figure. Nobody likes a dominant team. Nobody likes a dominant car. Well, then, of course, nobody liked uh, Carl Keekaver when he... Uh, had multi-car teams during the mid-50s. And then, of course, uh, during the mid-60s, nobody liked Holman and Moody, even though they did like the golden boy Fred Lorenzi. Well, probably a coincidence that I try to use uh, everything I do in college and relate that to uh, automobile racing like NASCAR. Now let's uh, sum everything up. We had a spectacular finish at the Daytona 500 even though Matt Kenseth won it again and Biffle decided to hold off Dale Earnhardt Jr. But then the one incident that grabbed most of the headlines was probably the fire and explosion after something broke on Juan Pablo Montoya's car and then of course he took out a jet dryer on the racetrack and nearly burned the place down literally. Well, exciting race, but then it was the next race at Phoenix that probably would have gotten everyone's attention. Denny Hamlin, who probably didn't come back from his uh, 2010 loss to Jimmy Johnson, he went back or he moved to Phoenix, Arizona and then eventually he won the Phoenix race. Las Vegas, it was Tony Stewart's turn, even though he hadn't won this early in the season before. Which is probably good news for him and the whole Stewart Haas organization. See, then the fourth race, Auto Club. Well, anyway, the Auto Club Speedway, Tony Stewart got that race. Although it rained and Jimmy Johnson was experiencing mechanical issues, he probably would have uh, finished the race, but not where he finished. Now, uh, let's see. Oh, that's right, I forgot Bristol. Now, the Bristol race, that was before Auto Club, it was. May not have been the best racing according to the fans' point of view because they want to get back to the uh, original style of racing when the track was uh, had its configuration from 1969 up until uh, 2007 when they tore it down and rebuilt it into what we have uh, called progressive banking. But there's a problem there. Fans didn't really like it. They don't like the side-by-side -side racing at Bristol. They just wanted to get back to the old form of racing. And as we speak right now, Bruton Smith is in the process of uh, tearing down the track and probably rebuilding it or just making a few changes like the media would always say, especially on NASCAR Race Hub or NASCAR Now. But then you got to get down to the Martinsville race. Rudiman, sure he was out there on a track riding around for about three or four laps, driving so slow. NASCAR was attempting to post his number, but he passed the pits probably for the second time, and they probably would have given him one more lap before they posted his number. But instead, he was... Uh, having trouble trying to steer the car because of a broken tie rod and then the car just quit. Now some of us can blame the top 35 rule for that 
Now the top 35 rule means only the top 35 uh, qualifiers are, or the top 25 drivers in the points are guaranteed a starting spot in any given race. However, if you're outside of that top 35, you may not make the show. And even if you did, the provisional spot would mainly go to the previous champions, uh, whether it be recent or probably some of those still, still racing in the series. Now, of course, Ruderman stopping in the middle of the, of the racetrack was probably one thing that affected the outcome of the race. A lot of people say that it was uh, Clint Boyer's fault. And a lot of it says it was probably Ruderman's fault because he changed the outcome of the race. Now let's take a look at the restart. Now before the finish of the race, Ryan Newman, he was right behind Clint Boyer. He may have pushed him down into the corner a little bit faster than he wanted to, but Clint Boyer... He tried to make a uh, three wide situation work. But then you got to realize that the Jeff Gordon and Jimmy Johnson, they were on hot tires. They had little or no grip of any kind. And that's probably was one of the situations that got out of hand. When you're running on old tires, you don't have much grip. Everyone behind them pitted for brand new tires. And any time you get fresh tires, you pick up speed just like that. And that meant, once you put on those uh, brand new tires, uh, you take off. Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson, they couldn't take off. And eventually, like Daryl Waltrip had said on one, of, on one of his videos, that he was a sitting duck. Or both of them were. And then, of course, Texas. Jimmy was probably trying to make up for what happened in Martinsville by trying to win at Texas. But then again, he, uh, during a long green flag run, got overtaken by Greg Biffle. And then when he was trying to get back around him, got a little bit over his head and went into the outside wall. He didn't tear up the car. But it slowed him down. And apparently trying to watch the race from your uh, mom or dad's or room at a nursing home doesn't make it any better. Because eventually I ended up missing the latter half of the race. But it just goes to show, next time when you're watching a race, don't ever take your eyes off the screen. So what about me? What have I been doing? Simple. Keeping up with girls. Or keeping up with an old friend. Well, keeping up with a girl. That I love so much. But then on the other hand, the uh, reconciliation that uh, I've been trying to work on all of last year just never came to be. But all the while, still keeping up with classes, still keeping up with the racing, and still trying to keep up with the racing and college at the same time, meaning trying to run the same bright red race car with O'Reilly stickers on them and the large number 25 on the doors and the roof. I'm still in the working process. Now, let's see. Right now, I would probably be going on to week four, maybe week five, I don't know. See, I may have already po posted the fourth week, but I do know one thing. All you got to do is watch. Now, in the meantime, I'm still trying to piece together everything for new friends up there on Facebook. Well, Serena, and then, of course, I've got, I've still got an, someone to deal with there, too. But in the meantime, 
I want to say to everyone that's uh, been wondering where I was. I just haven't had the time to come back to YouTube. Either that or because I decided to walk away from it for quite a while. But I'll tell you what. I'll still be back with the videos. I just won't be on as much to respond to comments or respond to messages. But in the meantime, enjoy yourself, watch some videos, whether it's here or anywhere else. And whatever constructive criticism you've got, post a comment or two. But I'll tell you what, even if I do finish with ITT and uh, give me a job or a good career, I may not be here as much, let alone Facebook. But don't worry, I'll try to be on as often as I can. But in the meantime, good luck to you and to you and yours. But as far as the racing is concerned, I'm still going to outlast each and every competitor out there on the racetrack. And when or if they ever get uh, NASCAR 2012 out of the way and finally get us players running that races there, or at least get this game published without any bugs of any kind, maybe then we'll worry about making those my last races. Well, not my last races, but maybe my last with ITT.